What was Australia's best-selling vehicle six years in a row and sold nearly 53,000 in 2021? It's a Toyota Hilux, yet it's not a passenger car. This is not a six-cylinder sedan like we used to have. We now love dual cabs, and this is the default dual cab, which is why we're here on the edge of the New South Wales Outback to test what this jack of all trades can do. Now, a lot has happened since this generation of Hilux launched in late 2015, to the point where dual cabs and utes in general are actually level pegging with medium SUVs for being Australia's best-selling category. Whereas the large sedans that these cars have kind of effectively replaced are gone. So, given that a lot has happened during this time, does this now six and a half year old Hilux still have what it takes to prove that it's the dual cab you should be buying? If you're wondering why we've brought a Toyota Hilux Rogue out to the Outback rather than to Noosa or to Apollo Bay, then I'll tell you, it's because it was the only Hilux we could get. But that doesn't take away from the fact that the Rogue is just as capable of doing all this stuff as any other Hilux. It just happens to be the one that has all the tinsel on it. And a lot of the stuff that it does add is actually pretty good. It's underneath a 2015 Toyota Hilux. This interior is hard plastic, has this fake stitching everywhere. It's trying to look a bit expensive and it's kind of not really succeeding. But even though this is a cliche to say about a Hilux and that is that it looks unbreakable and it kind of is sort of unburstable in its solidity and everything, I suppose that's to an extent where some of the expense is in this car. The interior of this, for all of its simplicity, actually feels like it will last for a long period of time. There is no sort of sense that switches are gonna break in your hand. And they're all about 20% larger than they are in any other car, just to make sure that even the Noosa Hilux still has a level of egalitarianism about it. Other things that set this rogue version apart, like anthracite roof lining, like the fancy JBL stereo with these big sort of sandwich speakers sitting on the ends of the dash and stuff like that, it actually does add something to the car. The stereo is excellent. The interior all looks pretty cohesive. I think when it's in black, even though it's boiling hot out here, it's 35 degrees today, it's less of a heat soak than it is in other competitor cars that are all black inside. Having all of the windows having auto up down function, just little things like that, shows that there is a level of detail in some areas that works in this car. We have rear air vents, as well as in the front, although we only have dual zone climate control at the front. And this screen that we have in here, which is tacked on for the update of this car, does actually work simply and well. That's what the Hilux is about. The combined fuel consumption figure for the Toyota Hilux Rogue is 8.1 litres per 100 kilometres. However, we average 10 litres per 100 kilometres. The warranty for Toyota in Australia is five years or unlimited kilometres. The servicing for the Hilux is every six months or 10,000 kilometers, with each service capped at $260 for a total over three years or 60,000 Ks of $1,560. Over the last 12 months, the median budget direct customer paid $1,135 to comprehensively insure a new Toyota Hilux. However, everybody's situation is different and your premium will vary based on things insurers take into account like where you live, with your garage, your car, and your driving history. As for the drivetrain and the Outback performance of this version in particular, it's actually really solid. In just the same way that the interior is cliched by saying it's unburstable, that's exactly what the Hilux delivers off-road. I don't think it rides quite as abruptly as it used to, although it's still not plush, but it is strong as. It can just be pounded over stuff and it doesn't really get affected by. It does jitter around like any other dual cab, pretty much all of them do, but this one feels rooted to the ground and planted and solid and confidence inspiring. Now we also have an Isuzu D-Max here. Oh yeah. So it even does those things and it doesn't really affect its stability. Like you go over a big bump and you think the Holax is going to get air and it in one case it did have air, but it sort of just very confidently landed. You wouldn't know that at some point in during that procedure that you had no tires on the ground. 
And in corners like these here, like the steering does feel quite heavy, a little bit stodgy at lower speeds. And I think it tends to sort of lighten up probably when you don't want it to, when you're really hammering it up. But I don't know, there's something about the, the chassis and the plantedness of the dynamics of this car that means that the steering isn't so much of an issue. It's just not keen to turn in like it is in the Isuzu. In the Hilux, it's sort of just there to help you along the way as an incidental piece of the car's dynamics rather than the best part of the dynamics. And finally, we come to the engine. The 500 newton meter tune in this car, just combined with a simple six-speed automatic with a power button, might sound like everyone's favorite aspects of the 90s, but it totally works in 2022. There's just a strong, instant feeling of torque in this car. And even though it only has six gears, who cares? It's still efficient, it's still really torquey, and it's actually a lot more refined than it's ever been. And for those reasons alone, this Noosa Spec Hilux Rogue is actually kind of good value if you think about the fact that it's also one of the best resale Hiluxes you can buy. So you pay $70,000 to begin with, you're gonna get as much of that back as possible than any other Hilux. Although, if it were me, I would probably move further down the range, SR5 or below. You can get this same drivetrain in an SR for like just under 53,000, although you don't get any of the jazzy bits in it. And maybe that's where the Hilux is at its best, just trying to be bulletproof for a big wide country like that and not trying to puts about in a beachside suburb. So I suspect that the best variant of this Hilux is actually gonna be the 2.8 litre SR at just under 53 grand for an automatic because it doesn't have all the tinsel on top but it also costs nearly $20,000 less. And I think that when you take into account things like the back seat in this Hilux being a little bit too upright and really not comfortable for an adult sitting in the middle that when you don't really have many fancy overheads scattered around you, that you're probably more willing to put up with the fact that the back seat isn't really that good, unlike the front, which is actually really good. If you haven't subscribed, please do so below the video, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment about what you think about taking a Hilux road to the outback, especially in this beautiful oxide bronze for Broken Hill, or about chasing cars in general. Thanks for watching.